Hello everyone, in this video electronics engineer Chris will be running through a demo of the latest HM7000 update, adding the exciting feature of consisting, allowing you to connect and control more than one locomotive or unit at any given time. Over to you Chris. So this is the new consist update in the HM7000 app. It allows you to connect and control more than one locomotive at a time. Um, up until now, if you wanted to, say, control an HST, which has got a, a powered unit at one end and an unpowered unit at the other end, you've had to access one, one of the locomotives in your engine shed, set the, set the throttle to what you wanted, and then scroll to the next one, the dummy car, um, and then set the throttle. Now you don't have to do that. You can consist up to eight locomotives um, together. So in theory, you've got the ability to be able to control um, the motor have motor control over eight locomotives at the same time. Um, the way you do that is really, really simple. Um, within your engine shed, within the app, will display all of your current locomotives in your library. Um, if you click new vehicle at the bottom, it now has an additional option for consist. Click consist you will see the consist settings main screen, which looks very similar to the locomotive settings main screen. Here you can allocate your locomotives to the consist, name the consist, um, and you can also, by means of scrolling through the various uh, screen options, have the ability to be able to globally or individually change things like uh, acceleration rate, deacceleration rate, global volume for all of the locomotives in that consist. So. By, to, to add locomotives to a consist, you click consist setup and you will see all of the locomotives in, available in your library. Any that are already consisted, will, you will see um, at the top of your screen, they'll be read and not available to be selected for a new consist. So for the purpose of this consist, we're gonna select these two BRHST locomotives down the bottom you will see that they turn green and it says assigned. Go back to the main consist settings screen and you will see in the consist setup, you've now got your two named locomotives in your consist and you can give it a name. So we're going to type in for this BRHST. Now the locomotive address isn't an editable field, but what the app does do is it looks within your engine shed library and will allocate the next available um, locomotive address for the consist, which in this case is address number six. So firstly, you have the ability within the consist screen, which I'll show you in a minute, to be able to control the functions individually on your, on your locomotives. So you can scroll between two different screens and have the ability to play horns, whistles individually to each locomotive. You can also play horns, whistles, a function, any function, um, globally. So anything in your consist, um, you can fire, say, a whistle, and it will fire that, that F2 whistle to everything that's available in your consist. So this import global, global function map is a way of you being able to import a current map given from all of your locomotives in your engine shed, or what it will do is it, it takes a snapshot from the, the profile screen that's in the app, um, and we'll, you can pick a, a function map from any of those profiles that are in the app. Now, this is a, a test app, so it's not fi the final version as in the live app, um, so there are quite a few in here that don't actually exist. Um, so for the purpose of this, I've just consisted the HST. So you can either pick your individual function map which you've allocated to your HST, or you could find it, the HST, and this is pulling through from the profile screen. So for this purpose, we will click it, and it says imported profile data. So when you go to your global functions tab at the top, it's imported all of your functions for you. Now you can, instead of importing global functions, you can add them manually. So if you had two different locomotives together, um, you can import your functions manually or, or add them manually. So here is your BR HST consist that we've just created. So as you can tell now, I've got 
one horn. This is the dummy car. There's another horn for the dummy car. And as you'll notice, I flipped the direction there, that's because within the decoder itself, there's a function map um, setting, CV119, and on the HST and other projects like the 800, you can enter a value. This is all contained in the HM7000 manual um, of one or two. It's, there's one, two or three, I think, on the flirt, but um, it allows you to then set it to powered car, unpowered car and it will then only play functions that are relevant for direction of travel. So the horns will only say operate whilst the locomotive is running forwards. Now, as you saw there, you have individual control over your functions, or you have global functions at the bottom here. Now what this does is it will fire a function to everything within the consist. So for example, daylight, if we turn that on, um, the directional lights on both the power car and the dummy car have now illuminated um, because it's sent the command to both locomotives in the consist. Again, likewise, if you wanted to turn the sound on and you do engine start, it will fire the engines up for both dummy and power car. Your global function window that popped out here will always be the opposite side to your throttle bar here. And you can change your, the orientation of your screen and you can change the location of your throttle bar if you want it left or right. By going into your settings menu, consist control customization, customize vertical UI scale, and slider, invert slider position so you can switch it between left and right. You can also change scaling on the screen to make the throttle bar narrower, wider, and the function buttons narrower and wider as well. So, now you start the engine, you turn the lights on for both your throttle bar here, which is touch sensitive, so you don't have to drag and drop like you did with the old uh, horizontal slide bar. You can just touch the screen now, and it will instantly set the speed for both the powered car and the unpowered car. Right, so our HST's on the move. We can, again, play with the horns individually or global function. And it will send a command to both decoders. The function masking feature's been set up in the decoder so it won't play the horns for the dummy car whilst the dummy car's in reverse or the motor car when the motor car's in reverse. So it really makes full use of that feature. So you've allocated your loco to a consist. Let's bring the loco to a stop. And also within the consist, what you can do, you've got the, the button down at the bottom here that's direction setup. Now you can invert the direction of one or two or however many locos you've got in your consist. For example, if you have two class 20s consisted together, they typically run when they're running together nose to nose. So you could invert the direction of one whilst keeping the direction that you'd previously set to the other unchanged. So what it would now do is invert the direction. So even if you apply the throttle to move the locomotive, you've inverted one, but they both still travel in the same direction that they were before. Your global brake button down here, um, this is global, so you press it and it will apply to everything that's in the consist, not just that locomotive that you're on, you've selected. Now you're in the consist, you can, you can disable the consist, first of all, switch the engine off for both, turn off directional lighting for both, and go back to your control screen. You'll see on your, also on your control screen you, the Bluetooth icon for each locomotive that you'll have in your consist will be either blue for connected or red if it's, if it's disconnected. So go back to your settings menu, go back into your consist. Now to dissolve your consist, all you need to do is go back into locomotive consisted options. Here you see your locomotives, 
go into Consist Setup and unassign both. Click back, you've got no locomotives in your Consist and now you've got operational control as you had before over, over both HST, power car and unpowered car. Whilst locomotive is also in a consist, um, you can, on your engine shed control screen, select DCC. So if you flip between Bluetooth and you don't want control mode via the app, but you want to regain that consist control information via DCC, so via your Elite, your Select or other DCC control, click your DCC button, you'll get a prompt saying your locomotive is still, access, still allocated to a consist. Do you wish to continue? Now what this is doing is, this is CV19 consisting. So what it will do is if you've inverted the direction um, or, or given, or the locomotive, whatever locomotive address has been allocated to the consist, you will then have that control within your DCC control on the fly by clicking DCC. To regain control, obviously, you can come back into the app, click Bluetooth, and you've again got Bluetooth control. Okay, so you can, like I said before, you can consist up to eight locomotives in one consist. If you've allocated locomotives to a consist, you won't be able to allocate them to another until you've dissolved the first consist that they are in. Here I have another two locomotives. I've got Battle of Britain and I've got an A23. So we want to consist them together. Go into your settings. Again, new vehicle, click consist, locomotives. Here you'll see all the red ones that are all assigned to another consist. The available ones are in blue. When you click it, it says assigned, and it's now assigned to that consist. Here are the names. Again, it will give it the next locomotive address. You can name your consist. We'll just call it Steam for now. Control mode, Bluetooth, DCC. You can on the fly, as I said before, acceleration rate for individual locomotives. So this is your global or your individual. Click locomotives and then you can adjust each one to suit. Exactly the same with sound settings. You can adjust the, the volumes individually or globally from your main front screen. So on your control screen, you will now see this consist five which has now got both of your steam locomotives consisted together. You've got your global functions, which you can import via your global function map. And as I said before, if you've got different types of locomotive with a different function map, you can, instead of importing a function map that is relevant for both locomotives, you can put the functions in yourself manually. But we, for this purpose, are going to import the function map for this Battle of Britain here. So when you go back to your control screen, and go to global functions, here they are. So what we're going to do is turn the sound on for both. And now with one, with the touch of the throttle bar, both should move in unison. And again, you've still got, your, you've still got control here where you can play a whistle for both individually. That's the A2. This is the Battle of Britain. Or with your global functions, I can fire the F2 and it will play the whistle for both. Right, so I'll reduce the throttle back to zero. You'll see both locomotives have come to a stop. Again, go back to your settings. If you want to dissolve the consist, go into your consist setup, unselect both of your locomotives, and now you'll see you've got individual control so that when you apply the throttle to one, only one of them moves and you've got independent control like you had before. Both your locomotives do not have to be stationary when you're setting up a consist, but it is recommended so you don't get any runaways or uncontrollable locomotives. But I've just set these two going up here. So what I'm now gonna do is allocate them back into that consist.
And the moment I touch the throttle bar here, this now applies the speed setting to both locomotives that I've got in the consist. So that works on the fly. Global function. Thank you to Chris for taking us through the new consisting update. This is an exciting development for modelers, so if you've been considering switching to HM7000 or are thinking about upgrading, this is a great time to do it. You can find more information on the update by visiting our website hornby.com. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment with any questions. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.